What if we find a fossil here? I think you are allowed to take it. <laughs> My name is Anastasia Magomedova. I'm 24 and I'm a pianist. And I'm Johannes Gray. I'm 25 and I'm a pianist. So we met in Paris just more by chance. I guess we weren't looking to form a duet at all, a yeah. duo. From the very beginning, we, we really felt each other and there were a lot of things that did not need to be discussed. We agreed on many aspects of how to interpret a certain piece, and we understood it in a similar way. But I think we've developed quite a bit in the past three years that we've worked together, and we listen to each other much more carefully. We love to perform, to share with people, and that's the reason that I started to play cello was because I was amazed by how I felt listening to my cello idols. That's why I started to play the cello, is because I loved how they made me feel and I wanted that to be my life, that I could give the same to audiences as well. I think we've also really enjoyed to play for, I would say, more intimate settings. And in that way, we could really interact with the audience directly and there was this exchange that way the audience that was able to connect with us um, on a more personal level I would say. This is know, this not is... a violin. <laughs> <laughs> we've been in Stevens many times now as we've been for two years artist in residence at the Scandinavian Cello School um, so we've been lucky to be here many, many times. From the very first moment that we came two years ago, I just loved the concept, loved the atmosphere, loved the people that are making this happen. At this point, I don't like playing pieces, you know, just because they're required or just because it's standard repertoire. I really want to find a piece that I'm in love with and that I am interested in bringing to the audience and making them love it just as much as I do. And a program that we're working on for the next season is based around fairy tales um, because together we played a piece called Hodka, Fairy Tale by... It started, yes, yeah. with the Yamachek Yama Hodka. Check. And with this we got so interested in how can we tell a story, speak and be a bards, as they would say, with our instruments. I think as children, we both loved we fairy both tales. We both loved fairy so tales as children. Then yeah. to allow ourselves somehow to continue telling these stories and listening to these stories is a very nice way to do it. Fairy tales, it has a sort of magical sense to it. And I think it also captures the attention of audiences of all ages. It becomes interesting to them. Across many cultures, you can find lots of similarities between them. When I was little, I was obsessed with fairy tales. I read them from all different countries. And then I caught myself realizing that, you know, these Danish fairy tales, they're actually very similar to the German fairy tales. And then these Persian fairy tales, they, they kind of repeat the same themes. They have the same idea that they're trying to get across. And I think they're under. They're universally understood. I, I was gonna say, music is a universal That's language. That's exactly what I was gonna so say. And so are fairy tales. Yeah.
One last detail that we really would like to develop is a new commissioned work by a composer from Tajikistan, Dalipur Shahidi. And uh, his wife is a writer and she writes fairy tales. So we think it would be a really wonderful addition to our program, a new work based on newly written fairy tales that culminate the completion of this project. Thank you.